Welcome aboard the USS Midway in 1950. In these opening scenes, the ship is in the Brooklyn Naval Yard in New York City. Putting on his sailor cap is my father, Don Delzio, Aviation Boatswain's Mate Fuel, or ABF Third Class. My dad said there were only two rules for anyone of his inexperience and low rank. If it moves, salute it, and if it doesn't, paint it. During the Korean War, instead of sailing in the Korean theater in the Pacific, the Midway served in the North Atlantic and on Mediterranean deployments. The signalman, hoisting flags that communicates the start of flight operations. Here's our first look of fighter planes parked on deck, single propeller, sky raiders, and corsairs, and those with wingtip fuel tanks are jet powered banshees and panthers. These were the workhorse naval warbirds of the Korean War. Flying in echelon formation. Here a dragonfly helicopter takes off to assume an airborne position right off the, the ship in, to assist any pilots that wind up in the drink. Signal flags communicating. Flight ops. Flying in echelon formation. And here is the Corsair fighter with its innovative gull-wing design, enabling a lower landing gear assembly to support the massive engine and propeller. The Corsair was originally ordered by the Navy in 1938 as a single-engine carrier-based fighter plane. It gained prominence in World War II, serving in nearly every Pacific theater campaign. Although the new jet age relegated the Corsair's duties, their role as a low-altitude attack plane ideally suited them for the Korean War. During its heyday, the Corsair held the distinction of being the longest-serving production fighter plane in naval history. Another strong asset in the Navy's arsenal was also the single-propeller straight-wing Sky Raider, which was the primary carrier-based dive bomber. The Sky Raider led the very first U.S. strike against the North Korean capital of Pyongyang in July 1950. Here is a retriever helicopter about to land on deck. The Korean War ushered in the jet age of fighter planes. Panther jets were the primary carrier-based jet fighters and were the first to see widespread use with both the Navy and Marine Corps. Here a Sky Knight jet, an early all-weather jet fighter, but was short-lived. It served on the Midway for just one cruise in 1952-53. The Korean War was witness to the first ever jet versus jet duels. It was a Panther that was the first Navy jet to shoot down an enemy aircraft. A pilot can land on deck as long as the previous aircraft has cleared the landing area and the wire has been fully retracted, but if not, the pilot is given a foul deck wave off. When not in the North Atlantic on suitability operations, the Midway served on Mediterranean deployments to guard NATO's southern flank. The ship was kept in the Mediterranean to maintain the nuclear deterrent against the Soviet Union. The Midway was capable of handling planes large enough to carry nuclear bombs. This is that plane, the AJ-1 Savage Attack Bomber. The Savage had a composite engine, two propellers and one jet and it served on the Midway from 1952 to 1954. 
this composite force engine plane and the co-mingling with jet-powered and piston engine propeller-driven counterparts on board the Midway is testament to the transition in naval aviation during the Korean War. Work atop the carrier deck was performed in climatic conditions, routinely fast-paced and hazardous. Crew members and their tasks were identified by their shirt color. Aircraft handlers wore yellow, chalk and chains wore blue, maintenance wore green, plane captains wore brown, safety personnel wore white, and those fueling the planes, which my father did, wore purple. They were affectionately called the grapes. Here a retriever helicopter goes to check out a whale that has gotten stuck against the bow. The whale isn't going anywhere for a little while since a 45,000 ton ship going 34 knots or approximately 40 miles an hour doesn't stop on a dime. Picking up disembarking sailors for a port of call. My dad was not only proud and honored as any serviceman would be to serve his country during the war, but he felt very privileged to have been able to visit all the countries that they did during those years. He saw bullfights in Spain, the Colosseum in Rome, the Parthenon in Greece, walked the streets of Paris, and ice skated at the foot of the Swiss Alps. Throughout the war, the Midway was usually deployed in the Mediterranean Sea, participating in NATO operations, or she was in the North Atlantic, off the Virginia Capes, for Panther jet suitability tests. The first generation of jet fighters had drawbacks. They were barely faster than single prop planes. The jets had limited range and a limited capacity for carrying armament, so the Navy took a cautious approach in the jet age transformation. In October 1952, after alterations to receive heavier aircraft as they were developed, the Midway hull number was redesignated to CVA-41, Attack Aircraft Carrier. Ten months after the last day of hostilities of the Korean War, my father was honorably discharged from the U.S. Navy in June 1954. At that date, the USS Midway was still the largest ship in the world. The following year, she went into the yards and came out with several modifications, including inventions made by the British, such as steam catapults, an angled deck, and a Fresnel landing system. Midway would go on to serve an unprecedented 47 years.